Welcome everyone. My name is uh, Xavier Bresson. I work in the Department of Computer Science at the National University of Singapore. Um, I would like to thank um, the chairs of KDD, um, Fei Da Zhu, Ben Ching Oi, Chun Yan Miao, and the organizers of the Applied Data Science Talks, um, Alan Haliva, uh, Ying Li, Vanessa uh, Evers, for the invitation. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, traveling salesman problem and how to solve it uh, using the transformer network. This is a joint work with Thomas Laurent from LMU. So this is the outline uh, of my talk. Um, I will give a brief history of TSP. I will uh, present the traditional solvers for TSP and then the recent solvers based on neural networks. I will show you the proposed architecture the decoding technique, and some numerical results. Um, I, will, I, will, I will give a discussion, and finally, I will conclude. So let me start with uh, TSP. So, uh, so you know TSP, so you have a list of uh, cities. And the problem is to start at one city and then uh, visit all other cities uh, exactly once, and then come back to the original city uh, with the minimum length. So this problem was first formulated by uh, William Hamilton in the 19th century. And this TSP, um, this problem actually belongs to a larger class uh, of routing problems um, that are used every day in industry, like uh, you know, warehouse organization, transportation, supply chain, hardware design, manufacturing, and so on. So TSP is, is a hard problem because exhaustive search is factorial time. Um, but it is also the most popular and the most studied combinatorial problems, starting um, from 51 uh, with the mathematician von Neumann. And TSP has driven the discovery of uh, several important uh, optimization techniques like Lagrangian relaxation and simulated annealing. So there are two uh, classes of traditional solvers. Uh, the first cl class is exact algorithms where you get an exact solution. And the second class is approximate algorithms where you're going to trade exactness with speed. Um, these algorithms, they are usually designed uh, by iteratively applying a simple uh, main uh, engineering rule, which is called an heuristic. So let me review quickly these additional solvers. So for the exact algorithms, we have dynamic programming uh, with uh, exponential complexity. Then we have Jurobi, which is a general purpose uh, integer programming solver. And, and, and then we have Concorde, which is um, a specialized version of Jurobi uh, for TSP. So Concorde today is seen you know, as the fastest exact TSP solver um, in existence. So you can cast TSP as an integer linear programming problem as follows. And I'm going to give you some interpretation of this um, of this equation. So the first uh, term, which is the linear term, um, is uh, the length of the tool. The second term, which is a constraint, is ba basically means that each city is going to be connected by with two other cities. And the last term is if you take um, um, a, a subset of the cities, like this one and the complementary, then the tour, uh, then the tour is going. So this subset um, are going to cut the tour by at least two edges. If they don't cut the tour by at least two edges, you know it means that the tour um, is disconnected and it is not a feasible solution. So integer linear programming problems are NPR because the space of optimization is binary. It's a non-convex set. Uh, it can only takes you know two values zero and one. So what you do when you are in this uh, um, in this situation is that you are going to relax to the closest convex set, which is uh, the interval zero one, and then you get um, something uh, popular, which is the linear programming problem, uh, which can be um, generally formulated as follows. So you're going to have um, a, a set. Uh, of solution, which is uh, called a polytop. 
and and then you are going to have uh, um, you know the linear objective and the x that you are going to decide is the one that is going to coincide you know with uh, the polytop. So solving this problem is actually can actually be done in quadratic complexity. The issue is is that um, we don't know the s, so we don't know when we are going to violate uh, the feasibility of the tool. So each time, uh, so we are going to identify this s iteratively, and and this makes the problem untractable. It's it's just impossible to track all the s. Um, so and it's also called you know. Uh, cutting planes techniques. So each time you identify a S, you can add this constraint into um, the into the, the constraints. So you, what you do is that you add a new uh, a new plane, so a new cut of the plane. So that's why you call that a cutting plane uh, techniques. Um, another issue with linear programming is that you get a continuous solution between zero and one. Um, so, for example, for this edge, you may get, you know, uh, the solution 0 0.51, and then you need to make a decision: Are you going to keep um, this um, edge uh, in the solution or not? So, this leads to a tree of possible solutions, and the branch and bound technique is a way to discard some part of the trees where you can prove that there is no solution. Overall, the complexity of Concord and Jurobi uh, is um, is, uh, uh, is, n, is, is polynomial times um, the complexity Bn, which is the number of branches. So we don't know theoretically what is the Bn. So what we can do is that we can experimentally uh, try to find out. Um, so here you have in the x-axis the number of cities, and the y-axis is the time you need for Concord to solve um, uh, the instance. Um, the, the dark curve is uh, Concord. And the blue curve is the approximation with a polynomial uh, complexity. And, and the red curve is the approximation with the exponential complexity. So you see that for small number of cities, uh, Concord behaves like a polynomial time algorithm. And then for a large number of cities, then Concord has an exponential uh, time complexity. So for the approximate algorithms, uh, the first one is, uh, was a Christophite uh, algorithm. Then there are insertion algorithms like this uh, illustration, where you are going to um, insert, you know, the farthest uh, node to the uh, partial uh, tour, uh, and so on until you get uh, to a tour. Then you have the Google OR tools, um, which um, solves TSP and also a larger set of vehicle uh, routing problems, and these use um, a set of heuristics. Another class of approximate algorithms is k-opt uh, algorithms. So for these algorithms, you are going to replace two edges um, to reduce uh, the total uh, the tour length. Okay. So you can do it with two edges. You can also do it with three edges. This we call a tree-opt move. LKH tree is um, is basically um, you know doing these moves. Um, but you need to select, you know, the candidates. And the way they select the candidate is by using a minimum spanning tree. Uh, and this is the best, um, uh, the best heuristic algorithms uh, for solving TSP today. So you can, um, you can make a hierarchy of traditional TSP uh, algorithms with complexity and exactness. Uh, uh, so uh, exactness means that this is the gap between the optimal solution and the approximate solution. So zero means you have no gap, uh, you get the exact solution. So of course, for uh, exhaustive search, dynamic programming and concord, um, the complexity is high and you would get um, uh, optimal solution. But for, um, for these algorithms, complexity is better, um, but you get an approximate solution. So let's uh, look at deep learning um, for TSP, uh, for the TSP problem. So deep learning has significantly improved uh, computer vision, natural language processing, and speech recognition in the last decade by replacing um, human crafted features by features learned from data. So for combinatorial problems, the main question is whether deep learning can learn better heuristic from data. So replacing, uh, you know, uh, human engineering uh, heuristics. 
And this is very appealing um, because uh, if you need to design uh, a new algorithms to solve, um, to approximately solve NPR problems, this will take a lot of time for mathematicians and computer scientists. Uh, for example, TSP has been actively studied for 70 years. Uh, and there are many problems in industry which are combinatorial by nature. So the last five years, I've seen the emergence um, of promising techniques where neural networks and graph neural networks have been able um, you know, to, to learn um, new algorithms to solve TSP. So let me review this, uh, these new algorithms. So first, obfil nets. Um, so this is the historical uh, neural network to solve TSP, and it's, um, it's, uh, it was in 85. And more, more recently, um, there was the pointer net uh, technique introduced by uh, Oriol Vinales and his collaborators. And this is, the, this is really the pioneering paper uh, using modern deep learning to tackle TSP and other combinatorial uh, problems. So what they, what they did in the paper is, so they, they took the 2D cities and they, 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 they make a representation of the cities using a recurrent neural network. And then they decode by um, also using a recurrent neural network to embed uh, the decoding cities and an attention mechanism to decide which city is the next in the tool. Um, so in, in this paper um, by Sammy Benjo and his collaborators, they improve Porter Nate. So uh, in Porter Nate, um, the network was trained by uh, supervised learning. So they needed some approximate ESP solution uh, to learn uh, the network. So here they use reinforcement learning, so they don't need any any more training data. Um, in this uh, paper, um, they uh, improve again um, the pointer uh, net. Um, so in, when you use a recurrent neural network to embed uh, the input city, there is a natural order. But for TSP, uh, the order is, is meaningful. Um, is, I'm, so, I'm sorry, is, is actually not relevant. So you need um, the network to learn to be independent of the order of the input city. So, um, so that's why you know this paper introduced order invariant um, um, encoder of the, of the cities. In this uh, work by uh, Nazari uh, and his collaborators, they use a graph neural network to learn a state value function Q to estimate the next uh, city in the tour. Um, so they train by reinforcement learning and memory replay. Uh, in this work by uh, Joanne Brunin and his collaborators, they cast TSP as a quadratic assignment problem, uh, which is uh, NPR, and they use graph neural network and supervised learning um, to train the network. In this paper, um, they solve uh, a variant of TSP with a multiple assessment um, they train by supervised learning, and the solution they get is uh, fractional, so it is a continuous solution. And they, they change this continuous solution into um, an integer solution by beam search. In this paper by um, um, Louis Martin Rousseau and his collaborators, they use the transformer, uh, uh, the, trans the, the self attention layer to encode uh, the input cities. And then they decode recursively city after city by, by using a query composed of the last three cities in the partial tool. Uh, in this paper by um, Max Willing and his collaborators, they also use a transformer for the encoding of the input cities. And they decode recursively by using a query composed of the first city and the last city, and also the global representation of all cities. Um, in this paper, um, we used um, a deep graph neural networks uh, to train, um, um, to predict the probability that an H belongs to the TSP solution. And then we decode, uh, we decode a tool by beam search. In this work by, um, by Wu and his collaborators, so they try to um, learn a policy to decide 
uh, which edges are going to um, are going to to move um, in this two opt uh, setting. In this paper, by Xing um, and and two, um, they use a graph neural network with Monte Carlo Research, um, and the idea was basically uh, to look ahead. So when you make a decision, uh, you cannot go back. So here the idea is let's try to look ahead before making a decision. In this paper uh, by uh, Fu and his collaborators, um, they combine supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Um, the supervised learning is actually our, our technique, which uh, train a network to give a probability that an edge belong to the TSP solution. And then they have a second step that uh, use this edge probability map um, with reinforcement learning and Monte Carlo research to decode a feasible tool. They were able to get to a very large number of, uh, of cities of 10,000. Uh, recently, and there was also the paper by Max Willing that combined, um, again, supervised learning with our techniques to um, train a network to give a, a probability that this edge belongs to the TSP solution. And then they decode using uh, dynamic programming with specific TSP constraints and they, they get the best uh, supervised learning solution for 100. Okay, now let's introduce our uh, proposed um, solution. So what we will do is that we will cast the TSP uh, problem as a translation uh, problem, where the source language is gonna be a set of 2D points and the target language is gonna be uh, a tool with minimal lengths. Uh, the motivation is, is quite natural. So in the recent years, Transformers uh, has been a powerful architecture um, and, and we, will, we wanted to uh, you know, um, apply this architecture to combinatorial problems. So we train by reinforcement learning with the same setting as, um, as the paper by Max Welling for, for comparison. So here is the proposed architecture. It is composed of an encoder and a decoder, and I'm going to detail this architecture in the next slides. So here is the encoder. Um, what we will do is that we will use uh, self-attention uh, layers to um, represent the input cities. So here is a kind of an illustration. So we will start you know, with 2D representation uh, of the cities, and then the encoder will try to um, you know, get the best possible representation where the decoding of the TSP uh, solution will be easy to do. So the decoder is going to be autoregressive, so one city at a time. So suppose that we have decoding the first T uh, cities in the tool, and we want now to predict the next city. So to do that, we're, we're going to have four steps that I'm going to detail now. So the first step is to give an input to the uh, decoder. So the input, so let's, let's say for example, that we have decoding you know, this partial tool and we are at the time t here. So the input of the decoder will basically be um, the, inco the, the, the encoding representation of the selected city at the previous time, i t. Okay, and then we will add to this um, vector a positional encoding because we want to remember the order of the sequence. So the positional encoding is the standard uh, transformer, uh, and, uh, you know, um, positional features. Part two. So once we have um, the input of the decoder, what we're going to do now, we are going to create a query for the next city. So to create a query, we are going to use a self-attention layer between the input of the decoder and all cities in the partial tools that have been visited so far. Okay, so we use a self-attention layer to do that. Part three, so now that we have the query, we can ask which city is gonna be the next one. So we can, you know, we can query, um, the unvisited cities. So we use for that a cross attention layer between the query and the unvisited cities. And finally, the last step, instead of using multi-head attention, we are going to use a single head attention. 
because we are only interesting to the next city. So we need a, dist a, a probability distribution over our next city. For this, we are using a single head attention layer. Once we have the distribution, um, the possible distribution over the next cities, we are going to sample this distribution. So we can use uh, Bernoulli during uh, training. And, and then during uh, inference, we can use, for example, greedy. So let's compare uh, uh, transformer for NLP and transformer for TSP. So the order of the input sequence is very important for NLP. The order of the words in the sequence is, is a strong information, but this is not the case for TSP. The order of the city is not relevant. So we don't have any position on encoding for, uh, for TSP. Uh, but of course, the order of the output sequence um, is very important. This is the, the solution that we are looking for. Um, for for, for the, the self-attention layer, for the encoder, we are not using layer normalization um, like in uh, NLP transformer. We're using batch normalization. And it works better because, because we have a batch of TSP of the same size. But for the decoding, because it is autoregressive, we are using a layer normalization. For training, we don't need any training data um, like NLP. We can, we can basically um, uh, learn by reinforcement learning by using the length of the tool as the reward signal. And both transformer for NLP and TSP have quadratic complexity. So this is the number of city square times the number of layers. So now let's compare with the most um, related um, uh, architecture, uh, which are um, um, the work of Max Welling and um, Louis Martin Rousseau. So we use the same uh, transformer encoder with batch normalization, but our decoding architecture is different. So our query um, uses um, all cities in the partial tool. For Max Welling, they, are, they used um, the, the city, the first city, the partial tour, and the, um, um, the last city. And for, um, for Rousseau, they are using the last three cities in the partial tour. We also start differently uh, the decoding process. Uh, we have a special token Z, which is a fake city. And this will talk with all the other cities to start to find the best you know, starting location uh, of the decoding process. In the case of, uh, of Welling, they are using a random token for the first and the current city. And, and um, Rousseau uh, is using, um, they are using a random token for the last three cities. The decoding technique now. So a tool is naturally represented by uh, an order sequence of indices. And what we do is that we cast TSP as a sequence optimization problem. So we have this probability that we want to maximize that the sequence belong uh, to the TSP solution. So in the case of autoregressive decoding, so one city after, uh, after, after uh, uh, one city after, after one city, um, we can factorize the probability. So the probability of having a tool is actually the product of the probability of selecting the first city times the probability of selecting the second city given the first city and so on. So the decoding problem is actually um, a maximization problem of the product of the conditional probabilities. And these conditional probabilities um, are actually learned by a neural network. So once we have the... Um, the conditional probability, now we need to decode. We need to decode a tool. So of course, exact search, we will get back to factorial. If we do greedy search, uh, we will get a linear complexity, which is the best one that we can do. Uh, and here we just you know, select uh, the next city which maximizes the probability. And we can improve that you know, uh, by better sampling techniques with beam search or Monte Carlo tree search, um, but we will, improve, uh, we will increase the complexity with the number of beams. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, skip that um, because of the lack of time. And I'm going to show you the results. Um, so this column um, 
this column is the class um, presents the class of techniques. So you have MIP, which is mixed integer uh, programming with Concord and Jurobi. You have heuristic algorithms with, like uh, insertions, OR tools, and LKH tree. You have here learning uh, techniques with supervised learning, uh, supervised learning, plus reinforcement learning, and reinforcement learning. Where so here you have training data, and here you don't have any training data. This is TSP for 50, 50, cities, 50 cities. This is TSP for 100 cities. This is the length of the tool. This is the gap. So this is um, you know, the, the optim optimality gap between the approximate solution and the optimal one. Um, this is the training time, and this is the inference time. So uh, Concord uh, is our baseline. And so that's why the gap is 0%. But Jurobi is also you know, uh, give, uh, providing the best solution. The same also for LKH3. For learning techniques, um, the recent technique by Cool also provides the optimal solution. Um, the same also for supervised learning and reinforcement learning, the technique of Foo. And if you don't use any training data, um, you see that our techniques provide uh, the best solution, which is also close to the optimal uh, gap. Here are some visual results. Um, the, red, um, the red curves are uh, for neural networks, and the blue um, are for Concord, with here the lengths. Here, this is um, zero-shot learning. So you train on the size of 50 nodes, and then you zero-shot uh, on the size of 100. And you see that you are able to get an optimality gap um, also quite good, like 1.4%. So of course, if you compare numerically the, um, the complexity between a Concord in, in, um, in black and transformer in blue, uh, this is complexity and logarithmic complexity, um, transformer are, is of course faster. Discussion. Um, so in this work, we essentially focused um, on the architecture. And unlike natural language processing and computer vision, the transformer architecture um, is also successful to solve combinatorial problems. Uh, TSP, but uh, you can imagine you can uh, easily extend to other combinatorial problems. Further developments, um, so straightforward developments would be to improve, you know, the sampling techniques, um, you know, like a group beam search or Monte Carlo tree search, uh, that would be a way to improve the results. Um, we can also um, use intermediate rewards, like uh, to opt, uh, um, so far, in what we've done is only using a global reward, which is the, the length of the tool. But we can get you know, intermediate rewards to improve the learning. So we have uh, promising results, but we need to moderate our optimism. Um, so today, traditional solvers like Concord or LKH3, they outperform learning solvers in terms of performance and generalization. Um, neural networks are faster, but they are not as accurate as traditional solvers. So what's next? Um, so something which is interesting is that we can learn longer uh, because we can generate an infinite number of uh, training data uh, in combinatorial optimization. It's very different from natural language processing. Here we can generate as many training data as we want. Um, so you see that the training curve, you know, still go down. Uh, you know, we can, we, we can do better. But at the same time, you don't, we don't want to train forever. Um, questions, natural questions are, can we improve the architecture beyond transformer? Can we have better learning paradigm uh, beyond uh, reinforcement learning? And of course, a very important um, uh, question is um, how to get to very large number of cities, like, you know, 1 million cities, for example. Um, and this is, this is a limitation today with transformer because we have a quadratic complexity. So recent technique based on graph subsampling and merging uh, look promising you know, to scale up. We can also consider harder TSP problems. Uh, so TSP is, is a kind of MNIST of combinatorial optimization, but you can imagine harder problems uh, with you know, uh, uh, more complex constraints where GOB and LKH3 could only provide weaker solutions or would take longer time uh, to solve. Uh, we could also consider much harder combinatorial problems where 
uh, traditional solvers like Jurobi um, can be used. So here you have um, linear complexity. You can also do quadratic complexity. Uh, I'm sorry, linear objective and quadratic objective with a convex set. But with uh, reinforcement learning, uh, you would be able to do non-convex objective and non-linear constraint. That's something uh, that you can do. Um, something also which is uh, very attractive um, in the coming, uh, coming years is to combine traditional solvers with uh, learning techniques. So um, if you take, for example, branch and bound technique in traditional solver, um, remember that sometimes you need to make a choice where if you are going to select this variable or not. Um, so today, to make this selection, it's a human engineering heuristic. For example, strong branching, which has a very high quality solution, but it takes a lot of time. So recently, um, so uh, uh, Lodi and Nair and their collaborators, they decided to, uh, to mimic this uh, branching rule. So during training, it takes a lot of time, but at inference, it's it just, you know, very fast. So they were able to speed up, you know, um, traditional solvers like this. So this is, this is the idea. If you have traditional solvers and if you need to make um, uh, an engineering, a human engineering so, uh, you know, uh, selection, then now with learning techniques, you would be able probably to mimic or to improve uh, this, um, this heuristic by reinforcement learning. Conclusion, uh, combinatorial optimization is pushing the limit of deep learning. Uh, um, traditional solvers still provide better solutions than uh, learning uh, techniques, but traditional solvers have been studying for, for quite some time, and the interest of applying deep learning um, has just started. So this topic will probably you know, expand uh, in the coming years, because in industry, there are many problems relating to assignment, routing, planning, and scheduling. So that's really um, a strong motivation to develop these techniques. Uh, Nova software will be developed based on uh, continuous, discrete optimization, and, and also learning techniques, such as equal. Material for this talk are uh, the archive paper on GitHub code, and also this article for general audience. Uh, the last slide I want to, uh, I I want to use is, um, if you are interested in this topic of deep learning and computer optimization, we organize a workshop at IPAM UCLA and all videos are available on YouTube here. Thank you so much for your attention.